you have a string of text, like a full name without spaces, and you want to split it into two columns, one for the first name and another for the last name, you look for a pattern, like the change in letter case. Excel gives us different options to perform the same task. I am Nabil Murad. In this tutorial, I show you how to split text at the second uppercase character. I'll be using three methods. I call them hard, easy, and effortless. Along the way, I'll show you some useful Excel tips and tricks. So let's dive in. Here is my start file. You can download the exercise file and follow along by clicking on the link below this video. In this worksheet, I have in column A a list of full name, first name and last name without any space in between. It's a long list, so if you scroll down, you see that it's a very long list. And what I would like to do is to be able to split this full name into two columns, a column for the first name and another column for the last name. And I have to look at a pattern, and the pattern is the last name starts with a capital letter, and that's the pattern I'll be using for separating the full name into two parts, first and last name. And in order to do this, I need to locate the position at which the break will happen. I need to locate the position of the second uppercase letter, and because the first name starts with an uppercase and the last name starts with an uppercase as well, then I need to locate the position of the second uppercase character. So let's do it first by using a find function. I'm going to type equal find and the find function find the position of a character and it's case sensitive. So I'm going to type in double quotation capital G because the last name starts with G and then I hit comma where do you look for this uppercase G? I look for it in cell A2. When I close the bracket, it tells me, well, this character is at position 9. And because not all the last names start with character G, then I need to locate the position of the second uppercase character, whatever this character. And to do that, I need to talk about two functions. I want to talk about a function called the char function, the C-H-A-R, and the character function returns a character corresponding to a number you provide. The character function for numbers from 65 to 90 corresponds to the letters uppercase A to uppercase Z. So if I type equal care, and then I hit tab, and I type the number 65 and I close the bracket, now I'm getting uppercase A. What if I type equal character, and then I type 90, that corresponds to uppercase D. And that's exactly what I'm looking for. I'm looking for an uppercase character between A and Z. I want to talk about another function called the row function. And what does the row function do? The row function is returning the number of the row. So if I type equal row, and then I hit tab, and then I close the bracket for now, and then I hit enter, it tells me you are in row number six, and that's wonderful. I want to use the row function to return a number to the character function. I want to use it to return between 65 and 90 so that the character function will be returning the characters between A and Z. The find function will take these characters and will return the position of that character. Let's see how we do this. I'm going to delete the first function I created and I start by typing equal character. And then when I hit tab, character of what? I'm expecting a number. Look at the screen tip. I don't know the number. I want any number between 65 and 90, so I'll be typing row. And then I hit tab, row what? I'll be typing 65 colon 90. And then I close the bracket. And then when I close the bracket one more time, now if I take this part, let's see what it returns. I'm going first to take the row function and test it. I'm selecting the row function with its opening and the closing bracket, and then I hit the F9 key and look at that, it's returning an array of numbers between 65 and 90. Don't forget, you must hit the control Z. Now, let's select the entire part, the character, with the row function, and then when I hit F9, it's returning a list of the alphabet in uppercase A to Z. 
Look at the curly brackets. That's an array. I'm going to hit Control Z. I have to keep in mind that I'm copying down, and when I copy down, these numbers will increment. I don't want the numbers to increment because I'm always looking at the characters from 65 to 90, so I'm going to put my blinking cursor in these numbers. I want to lock them, and it might not be very common locking numbers. We always lock cell references, but that's also work. I'm hitting the F4 key once, and I'm locking the 65 and the 90. The character function is returning a character. Should you wish to scoop it out and paste it in the find function, that's fine. Let's do that. I'm going to cut all this portion, Control x to cut it, and I'll start creating my find function. Equal find, and then I hit tab. What do you want to find? I want to find any character from A to Z, so I'll be pasting what I copied, Control v and then I hit comma. The second argument of the find function within text, which simply means, where do you look for it? I'm trying to select. The screen tip is covering the cell that I want to select. That's not a problem. I want to select cell A2. I'm unable to click on cell A2. I can select the cell above or the cell below and use the arrows on my keyboard. I'm selecting cell A1, and I hit the down arrow to move to cell A2. And then I hit comma. Which occurrence are you looking for? I'm looking at the second uppercase letter, so I'll be typing to, and I close the bracket. Let's have a look at what the find function will be returning. I select all this portion, and I put it in the edit mode by hitting the F9 key, and that's beautiful. It didn't find letter A, so it returns a value error. It didn't find letter B, it returned a value error, and so on. But look at this 9. It found letter G, the capital G, and it's at position number 9. That's wonderful. The find function was able to locate the position of number 9. How can I get this number out? First of all, I need to get rid of all these errors. So I'm going to put my find function into an if error, then I'll be grabbing this 9. Let's hit Control Z, and then I want to put all this function in another function. You can simply click before the find, or you can cut it and paste it into the containing function, the wrapping function. What's the wrapping function? If error. So I type if error, and then I hit tab. I click at the very end, and then I hit comma, if error. If all this part is returning an error, what do you want? I want nothing. Double quote, double quote, and close the bracket. Now, if you want to test all this part, select all this bunch of functions, and then hit the F9 key, and look at that. I have nothing, 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 with only one single number. How can I get this number out? Remember, we have all that inside a curly bracket, and that's important for this function to calculate. I'm going to hit Control Z, and I'm going to grab the number by using a min function. So I type min, and then I hit tab, and I close at the very end. I was able to create my function. When I hit enter, to my surprise, I'll be getting a value error. Because of the curly bracket, that means it's an array function. And for an array function, you need to hit CSE, which is Control Shift Enter. So let's put the function one more time in the edit mode. I hit F2, and now if I hit Control Shift Enter, I get number 9. I can simply copy this function down. I double click and send it down. So long as I'm getting the position of the second uppercase character. I want to split the first and last name. To extract the first name from column A, I'm going to use a left function, because the first name is to the left side of the string of text. I'll be typing equal left, and then I hit the tab key. Left of what? Left of the contents of cell A2. I hit comma. How many characters would you like to extract from the left side? I want to extract whatever. The find function has returned whatever I have in column B. But hold on a second. Would you like to extract up to and including the capital G? Definitely not. I want to exclude it, so I'll type minus 1. And then I close the bracket, and then hit enter, and I was able to extract the first name. Let's copy it down, double click and send it down. And then let's extract the last name. For the last name, I have so many options. I can use a mid with a length function, but I'm going to use a replace function instead. Equal replace, and then I hit tab. Where is the text where you want to make the replacement? 
it's the text in cell A2, the full name. I hit comma. Where do you want to start the replacement? I want to start from the very first character. I type one, and then I hit comma. How many characters? What's the number of characters that you want to replace? Well, I want to replace up to the second uppercase letter, not including this letter. So I'll be selecting the result of my find function, minus one. And then I hit comma. When we replace from the first character up to not including the second uppercase character, what would you like to put instead? I want to put nothing. So what remains will be the last name. How do I write nothing? Double quote, double quote. And then I close the bracket. Now if I hit enter, I'll be getting the last name. I can copy it by hovering over the lower right corner, the autofill handle, and double click and send it down. That was my first method for splitting column A into two columns based upon the second uppercase letter. I used a combination of functions. I used the row function, the character function, the find, if error, the min, and we used the left and the replace function. That's a hassle. I used lots of functions. That's why I called it the hard method. Let's go now to the easy method. I click on the next worksheet. I have the same exact list of names, and I'll be using Power Query. In order to send this list to Power Query, I need to convert it to table. With any single cell selected, I hit the shortcut Control T. T stands for table. My table has headers. I hit Enter, and I was able to convert it into a table. Let's go up at the top and give a name to the table. I'm going to name it My Names, and then hit Enter. After naming my table, I want to send it to Power Query. So I go to the Data tab of the ribbon, and on the Data tab, in the Get and Transform group, I'll be selecting from Table. My Query Editor opens on top of Excel. If you look at the name to the right side, I can read my names, and I can see the applied steps. Well, all what I want to do is one single step. I want to split this column at the change from the lowercase to the uppercase. I could do that by right-clicking on the column header and then select Split Column. That's one option. I have the same option on the Home tab of the ribbon, Split Column. When I click here, look at the beautiful options we have. By lowercase to uppercase, by uppercase to lowercase, I can split by digit to non-digit, by non-digit to digit. Lots of options. These options are relatively recent to Power Query, so I'm going to select from lowercase to uppercase. Don't blink. If you blink, you miss the whole action. I click on that, and I'm done. I just need to rename the two columns, so I select the first column header. I hit F2, and I'll be typing first, Enter. And then I want to move to the next column. I hit the right arrow on my keyboard, F2. And then I'll be naming this one last, Enter. Now I want to send my list back into Excel. I go to the Home tab, Close and Load, Close and Load 2. I want to dump this list into the existing worksheet. So I select Existing Worksheet. I can minimize. And then I select the destination. Let's say I want to put it here in cell D1. And when I hit OK and hit Load, I was able to split the single column into two columns. If more names are added to the original column, all what you need to do is to right-click the query and select Refresh. That's the second method. Very easy. And that's why I called it easy. Now, let's go to the fun method, the effortless method. I click on the next sheet. And here I have the same exact list. I want to split it into first and last. And I'll be using this time the flash fill technique. Flash fill simply means you are creating a model, you are creating a pattern, and you tell Excel, would you please replicate that pattern for the entire column? So I'll be typing the first name, Baddelli, and then I hit Enter. Are you ready? Hit Control e and we are done. Let's do it one more time. I'll be typing the last name, Greta, Enter, Control e We are done. And that was the last method, and I called it effortless. I showed you three methods for performing the same task, either by using a combination of function, and I called it the hard method, or by using Power Query, and I called it the easy method, 
or by using the flash fill, and I called it the effortless method. Which one you prefer? Let me know in a comment here below. And if you enjoyed this training video, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel and ring the bell to be notified when your tutorials are released. The best is yet to come. Thank you for watching and see you next time.